I am a temple who walks the earth. My womb is fertile for giving birth. I am a woman planted in truth. I grow my branches from sacred roots. You are the form of who you want to be. So come untethered, your soul is free. We're here to heal, we're here to thrive. We are a dream who's come alive. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake, a revelation for God's sake. An evolution for God's sake, an inspiration for God's sake, 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 for God's sake. And so it is. Hello, Essence. This is Jody England, and you are listening to Wild Soul Medicine Radio. So here we are together. Is there really any other way to be? <laughs> yeah, so much, so much going on in us and around us. And so we just convene here together to see what's so, to sift through the illusion and the sticky places, the painful places, the question marks, and see if we can come closer to that which is true. Seating ourselves again and again in the home of the center of our Selves. This weekend, I was hosting a ceremony with some deeply delightful magic school women, and we were really we were having amazing, an amazing experience. And it was a weekend retreat, so we were together Friday through Sunday. And Saturday morning, one of the sisters informed me. Of what had been, what had occurred in Paris on Friday night, and I have to admit, there was a place in me where I really didn't want to know. You know, I could see that she was upset by it, and I was feeling really good. I was feeling really good, and all was well in my cocoon of sisterhood and yumminess and flow, and um. And I thought, okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I need to know it, but I also want to be here for you. So uh, tell me what you know and what you make of it. And um, and then I just offered her some love and some being with. And I kind of put it away. You know, I, I kind of then just put it away. And we convened the rest of our weekend in just absolute scrumptious sisterhood and miracles and magic and really such, such delight. And when I came out of the weekend on Monday, I didn't watch TV all day. I purposely was just avoiding, like, I don't even think I need to know that. And I spent just a little time on Facebook and I could see, you know, everyone changing their flags, you know, to France over their pictures and, you know, posting tributes and traumas. And I was like, eh, okay, I don't need any of that. I'm way too good for that. You know, I'm too good right now. I don't need that in my space. And Tuesday, I finally was like, eh, maybe I need to know a little bit. Maybe I should at least know what happened. So watched a little of the morning show, I read a few posts, really as little as I could. And it was interesting as I dropped in to feel into the show this morning, um, it was really talking about these events was the furthest thing from my mind. And, you know, so I was kind of just sifting through what's moving in. And um, coincidentally, the theme of the weekend that I was in was called togetherness. 
And it was togetherness as in we're actually gathering in person and we haven't done that yet. And also about integrating what we've learned and bringing ourselves into a, a wholeness. And, and that theme continued to unfold in so many magical ways throughout the weekend, showing its multidimensionality. And, um, and so there was a part of me that was still clinging, right? So as our ego does, I was clinging to a piece of togetherness, meaning it needs to be utopia like it was there. And so I don't want to damage that goodness by being with this obvious dissension and what could be further from togetherness than, you know, this violence and terrorism and the polarizing of, you know, are you uh, for Muslims or against? Are you letting in refugees or not? Are you, um, you know, are you this kind of wrong or that kind of wrong, right? And then as I started to drop in, I realized that, of course, it's, you know, the next dimension of the teaching for myself and for all of us, which is that we cannot be together when there is any part that we are not willing to be with. And it's very tempting. It is very tempting to find a reason to continue separation with each other, right? Those are kind of the easiest ones. You think we should let refugees in? You think we shouldn't? Well, we're different, you and I, right? When you listen to the Republicans, you know, speak about, um, you know, what they would do with immigrants and what they would do with uh, terrorists and, uh, you know, the very harsh line that leaves no room for anything other than intolerance and bigotry. And then you listen to the other side where it's, um, you know, people are afraid to speak the religion of the people who do the things um, and sidestep stepping on anyone's toes or having a critical discussion about the pros and cons Right? It is a both and. This is not a simple discussion. Nothing is. Nothing is. And we move further and further from our truth when we try to make things so black and white and so simple. I will explore shadow. I will not explore shadow. I am only love. I am only spirit. Right? Our ego is just looking for a safe place. Like if I'm feeling love right now, I don't want to hear anything that is not love. You know, but that's also a bypass because here's the thing. Yes, everything is love and love is the greatest energy in all of the universe. And love is multidimensional. It is more than you can possibly fathom. Love is grief and abandonment and separation and rending your clothes at the side of your fallen loved one. That too is love. And when we look at the atrocities and the terrors and the violence that continues to pervade our world, you know, there was a there was also a part of me that was actually a little annoyed about the fact that this particular incident immediately got so much attention. You know, I would, I would say that has largely to do with the fact that it uh, happened, you know, to white people uh, in settings that are very familiar to our own. Um, it have happened to people who are privileged, who are not used to experiencing violence on their doorstep. And so atrocious, yes. Unusual in the world? Not at all. This happens every day. There are tens of thousands of girls and women being sexually trafficked every single day. And I would dare say that's harder to experience than being shot once. Yeah. You know, and so I was a little kind of pissed off. Like, oh my God, here we go again. And, the, you know, it just gives an excuse to beat the war drum and to 
you know, speak of division and to speak of wrongness and strife and to lead us even further from our truth. And our truth is there is only one of us here. When one hurts, we all hurt. And we're very, very new to this evolutionary game of understanding how to be with, to be with that, that which is not familiar, that which is not comfortable, uh, that which feels scary. Our minds don't know what to do other than make it wrong, to push it away. And the remedy is consciousness, is awareness, is knowing that whatever you are present to outside of yourself is an invitation to come deeper into yourself. Right? So whatever your perception is of the events occurring in our world right now, there is a bridge. There's a bridge. So if your story is the world is violent and scary and I don't want to be here, right? That's actually about you. If your story is um, there's senseless violence and I can't stand people who would do such things, the invitation is to be with the senseless violence in your own system. Who and what are you being violent to? For one, you're being violent to the perpetrators, right? In your thoughts. Are you also being violent with yourself? Is there some secret hidey hole where uh, you are perpetrating against yourself? Where you're saying, I should know this already. I should be through this already. I want to kill this part of myself off because it's so slow and, it, and I don't get it. Right? Just like the terrorists. I am them. If your story is about, like mine was, you know, that, um, gosh, people are just looking for a cause or looking for a reason to be dramatic. You know, because that's easier than doing their own personal work, right? That's an invitation into myself as well. You know, I don't know myself as dramatic, but I do know that in the moments when I'm noticing how others are not doing their own personal work, I too am not doing my own personal work. And it makes it a lot easier if we can begin these explorations with, I forgive myself for... I forgive myself for judging Republicans and their ignorance and their stupidity, right? I forgive myself for becoming that which I eschew. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard because there sure is a lot, right? There's a lot. It is sad. It is devastating. It's, you know, it's touching. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the violence and the... um to wonder, are we really going to make it? Are we going to do this thing? Are we ever going to become kind? Will love be able to rule this planet? These are questions I don't know the answer to. You know, I certainly hope. I certainly hope we're headed in that direction. And what I know is that our greatest hope for having that occur lies within ourselves and only within ourselves. Hurt people, hurt people. You cannot blow yourself up and blow up others and shoot them dead unless there is something deeply awry in your own system. Unless you have completely lost your way to go inward and see how whatever you're feeling, whatever you think you're going to change at the end of that gun, actually can only be changed inside of you. So we can 
light candles and we can say prayers. We can bring flowers. We can make every monument. And yet, if we use those as a bypass to going in and taking a look, in a way, we're no different than the terrorists. Yeah. And for me, these events light a fire in me for the importance of this soul work that we are engaged in. It's always important. We've known that. And we do not have time to continue fucking around. We can't put off till tomorrow to see the thing. We can't keep avoiding that deep part of us. We can't stop looking at our shadows. We can't run the other direction. We must sit and listen. We must go inward with a gentle gaze. We must put hands on heart and hands on belly and hold ourselves hold ourselves to the fire of our own becoming. It's one step at a time, one step at a time. Yeah, and it's not, um, it's not a linear dance, you know? It's not like we're going to figure something out and then everything's going to be great. You know, we're going to know ourselves more and then some things are going to happen, you know? And then we're going we're gonna to practice some things. So then a few of us who know ourselves sort of well are going to try to come together. And we're going to try to be in community with each other. And then we're going to have experiences. This is what we were practicing this weekend is a revolutionary way of being together in our essence, in our fullness, or as much of our essence as we know right? It's complete or incomplete as it is in a moment. And noticing that even then it's not so easy. It's not so easy navigating these spaces, right? What if what you want is different than what I want? What if I'm seeing something that you should really take a look at, but you're not interested in seeing it? How do we be in relationship? How do we even be in space together? What if my response has me running the other direction and that totally doesn't work for you? Then what? Right? These are the rocky days of us beginning to figure this out. You know, when we're all fully in essence, when we're fully in our universal oneness, togetherness is a piece of cake, right? Because one really is all. And then in this transitional period, right, where we can barely figure out, how to even get a foot in the door of beingness. And we're walking side by side with those who are intensely committed to being asleep in various stages. What's a girl to do? Yeah, one thing we discovered this weekend is we keep practicing. You know, we notice, we notice these places where our soul path lends itself to a certain way, right? So some of us love being together. In fact, we prefer together over to get her, right? To get her as in our individuality, our radical individual togetherness. That's super scary for those who like to be in community, those heart led, right? Where the bypass is, I'm so busy loving you. I can't even imagine something other than that, right? 
But the problem is, that's actually a false foundation for us to build our communities on because if there is no you without us, then us essentially becomes weaker, right? Because there is no actual foundation. And we have a whole other side of the table, right? Those of us who get ourselves very well, we prefer to mine the fields of our own mysteries. We revel in the temple of the mystery of ourselves. And togetherness is very cumbersome, right? It is fraught with peril. You're too loud. You're too much. You're too um, not in your own togetherness, right? It's hard for me to be with you because you want to be with me so much. Yeah. Yeah. And so we might isolate ourselves or move away or become quiet or become judgmental. You know, we have those gears. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are the mystics, right? The mystics who, um, who are in the oneness, right? They are in the togetherness of universality. And deigning to drop down into one drop of individuation well, they're just way above that. <laughs> yeah, and so why did we choose all of this? Why did we come with all of these seemingly disparate paths? Why didn't we come as one simple blueprint? Where we could drop in here and it would be kumbaya the whole way along. We didn't do that because that's who we are when we're not here, right? We will return to that, and we know that we come from that. And we are that in this moment. It's just that in between our remembering of that and the embodiment of that on the planet, there's this walk of understanding and ego and losing the places of separation within ourselves and bringing our parts back home. Exploring the boogeyman in the corner, right? Daring to look at the violence within ourselves. The shadows, the intolerance, the righteousness, the fear. Being willing to be with all of that truthfully, not even as a means to an end, not so that we can have it go away or so we can understand it and then get to the better stuff. That wouldn't actually be being with it, right? The truth is sometimes I can be a hateful shit. Sometimes it scares me how angry I can get. Still, even after all this work. That's true. That's true. And um, if you're a sunshiny type who's not in touch with her anger, what scares you? Right? What scares you? Where are you giving yourself an out? Where are you believing that you are better than? I just don't feel those things. I just don't go there. I just, it's just something else for me. Okay, great. Be present with what the other thing is. That is trustable. That we can build a community on. We cannot build it on pretension. We cannot build it on bypass. You know, it's even, it's subtle even in our, um, like our, the way that we mourn these things, right? Like there's an undercurrent of um, poor them, um, yay me, right? It's subtle. It's subtle and yet it's present, right? And I guess what I'm inviting us into is like, what if we could not waste time? What if we could not waste time on the distraction of the thing, not use it as a reason to not continue to do our deep, deep work? 
as we stand here together in the exploration, in the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that was occurring for me uh, in ceremony this weekend was this recurring theme of, I want to be all there and all here. It feels to me like it's an exploration of this piece of continuing to embody my soul. So in the past, I was so spirit and so up and out and no body at all. And then I've been working on embodiment, working on embodiment, working on embodiment. And um, and in September really opened uh, a f- the first sort of lasting connection around being able to experience the entirety of my humanness while also experiencing the entirety of my spirit. And yet... Um, there's a, it's almost like an hourglass, right? Is what it feels like in my energy system. The bottleneck being kind of around my heart space. So what I kept experiencing through the weekend was like, I love everything that's happening in this space right here. And like, I'm really uncomfortable on this hard mat. So I love it. I would love it if we could take all of this and move it to the place where there's a more comfortable bed, right? Where we could all be. But then we would lose, you know, we would lose some people and we would lose the music and then the vibration and, right? So it was like, I could see the two things, but I couldn't find a way to actually bring them together, you know? And, um, and I continue, I'm continuing to really play in that and notice that, um, notice how like I'm simultaneously in a space of things are so perfect Right. So that's where I was when I heard about the news. It's like, um, I want all of this, you know, I want all of this beauty and perfection and utopia that we're creating right here. And I want all of that. I want the entire world. I want the experience of the entire world also. So I um, don't have to hide because any place we would limit our experience is not a wholeness, you know? And so, um, like I was just talking to a friend the other day about this idea of expanding. So a very spiritual woman who has a large business and also is considering, like, is it big enough or do I need to do more, right? Because I could do more. And, and so there was a place where she was asking, um, you know, am I called to more because that's what the world says and that's what everyone's pushing us towards? And so, you know... Um, so really, I'm good where I'm at. Or, um, you know, is there some, like, how would I know? How would I know if I should get bigger? And I wrestled with exactly those questions as I was growing my business because, you know, at the point where I'm making plenty of money and I don't actually need any more money, then my mind started to say, well, why would you get any bigger? Why would you do any more work? Why would you... You know, I'm not concerned with legacy. I do know that this work is potent and, you know, would the planet would benefit by having it exist for more people. And also, um, do I sacrifice myself and my own free time and my own um, freedom, you know, on behalf of others? And I couldn't quite find that gear of how I could do one without the other, right? I want all of this and all of that. And yet it felt like there was a limitation. And so I started to get curious about the limitation, the belief that if I got bigger, I would somehow be less free. Right? And what I began to notice is that if I am attached to limiting myself because I fear some constriction, then I'm staying a certain way really out of lack of wholeness. You know, in reality, my soul is infinite. My soul is infinite. So any discussion around needing to keep my business a certain size is actually just illusion. You know? And so when I started to play with that, magical things started to happen. 
people showed up who wanted to grow my business for me and exactly the right people showed up to work in my business and on my business. And, um, and I didn't actually have to do anything. There wasn't even a decision to continue getting out of the way. I just was, I just am. And I largely just am, you know? And so I begin to play with that in these other realms as well. If I'm in a utopian space and something bad happens in the world, is there a way that I can allow myself to be both and so I don't have to run from the thing that I'm labeling as bad? I don't have to hide from it or avoid it. I also don't have to embrace it and align with it. I wonder what's beyond those things. So I'm all of this and violence and darkness and shadow exists in the world. And I don't let it diminish me and I don't guard against it diminishing me. There's an isness about it. Yeah, you can try it on in your system, right? It's, it's tricky and you begin to get a glimpse of there's something true there. There's something true. The reason that's tricky is because we have so much story. But if I don't do something about it, if I don't align against it, then will it keep happening? And if I don't avoid it, will it get on me or contaminate me or bring me down or, right? And if I don't fight against it or rail against it, you know, will people be safe? Will justice be served? She raises an eyebrow. Yeah, I don't know all the answers. I don't know all the answers. What I do know is that I'm not interested in limiting my experience in any way. That the only remedy for separation is wholeness. When I begin to move beyond the concept of here and there, we get to reside in the end. Yes, yeah, so in this moment, I invite you into an exploration of your own broken heart. making none of it wrong. There's no way you should love the world. There's nothing that should be different. See if you can tune into the crack. That runs right down the center of you whatever that crack is representing. If you haven't been tuned into these events, what else is it representing? Where are you holding yourself apart? Where are you in fight or flight or freeze? And you might just look at it energetically. Sometimes the words actually solidify the divide. Right? Words carry such energetic concept with them that sometimes even speaking them actually creates them. Always speaking them creates them. And so you might just play with the energetic. If you can feel the divide, first just honor. Honor the divide. We are necessarily separated or we wouldn't be human. This is, after all, a human experience. So of course, separation, here it is, right in the center of myself. You might even practice gauging the separation, right? What size of a bridge would span such a separation. Or 
Or maybe it's just a tiny one, just a hairline fracture. Notice if you dip into the space in between, if there is an energy there that needs to be felt or witnessed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And just be with that almost as if you could bathe in it, scooping that energy up and painting your face with it. Fully embracing whatever it is. It's just energy. It's not real. It's not going to hurt you. But it could hurt us. If you don't feel it, it could hurt us. And in that way, it could hurt you. So you can keep avoiding it if you'd like. If you're not ready, I understand. And also you might just get a little curious. One little dip of, of a finger. These beliefs about why this can't be put back together, they all live right in here in this crevasse. And then you might, just for your own curiosity and motivation, you might imagine out in front of you that you could take a look at the crevasse of just one of the people who blew themselves up on Friday night or yesterday, or one of the kidnappers who took all of beautiful little girls out into the jungle, right? choose one of them and take a look at their fracture. Mm -hmm. I see you. I am you. I love you. You have been them, I have been them, in this life or another one. We all keep demonstrating for each other the way home and the way not home. These characters are holding up a mirror for us to know more about who we are. In a way, it's irrelevant what religion they practice or what mode of destruction they use. The point is that separation all leads the same place. Pain and suffering and destruction. And so I bow to these souls, these beautiful souls with the courage to come here and demonstrate this opposition for us so that we could have this opportunity to see ourselves. So I invite you to take any power back from these people, those people, any beliefs you have that you're wasting on holding them to a certain standard, just go ahead and take all that power right back. Use it to begin to fill the separation in your heart. And then I give a deep bow. I give a deep bow to these souls. Thank you. Thank you for coming to show us. We forgive you.
and we forgive us. And then turn your attention back to your own crack. And see if there is an energy, if there's a particular color or quality of energy that you might fill that space with. And again, it may not be something you know by words because words might limit what's required here. The divine is very willing to help with that. And so we begin to fill ourselves, to heal our divides, to bring ourselves into union. It's not only all that we can do, it literally is all there is to do. Om Shanti Shanti. Aho Amen. Now and evermore. And so it is. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for being willing to meet me here as we stand in our togetherness at the throne of the to get her ness, holding hands at the edge of the abyss as we make our way home. Until next time, sisters. So much love to you. Bye for now. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake, a revelation for God's sake, an inspiration for God's sake, illumination for God's sake, for God's sake, for God's sake.